Hello, I'm Mark Luba, Vice President of Product Management with One EdTech Organization, and I'm joining you from Ellicott City, Maryland. Hi, I'm Guillermo Elizondo. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Territorium, and today I'm joining from Monterey, Mexico. Hi, Guillermo. How are you today? Very good. Thank you, Mark. Um, and thank you very much for inviting me today. Uh, really glad to have you. I guess thinking back, you know, it's been two, two and a half years, I think, since we first met. And, and um, reflecting on the trajectory of Territorium as an organization, from what I can see, and from, you know, my observation of some of the leading companies in the space, they all seem to to be driven by some type of a motivation or an inspiration that um, they're following. And, and I'm very curious from your point of view, you know, what are the problems that you set out to solve with the, your suite of products? Really, uh, what motivates us is how we help students to move from education to work. And, and I will say people from work to education is really um, helping people, users, to transition in that border, the education and work border. Um, a lot of what we focus on is how we help higher ed students, high school students, understand what are their skills towards getting the jobs that they want. And more than just having a traditional transcript with courses, grades, credit hours that does not says much about them. We are really focusing on understanding, hey, these are the skills that you have. And based on these skills, this is your progress towards getting this type of job. This is the probabilities of, for you to getting those jobs. And it's really helping the student with all that data to navigate between career pathways, understand their gaps, connect them into jobs. And at the end is give equal access of opportunities um, to all people to get jobs um, and not just rely on a transcript or even just like a degree. And, and we're also looking at uh, making inclusion, like no matter where, what university you come from, no matter the brand of the university, what really matters is which skills you have. Um, and that's really what motivates us. Uh, how can we show those skills and how can we use the data uh, to help people navigate into jobs, to help people navigate from jobs into school, to create on and off ramps for people between education and work um, and understanding at the end how they are developing what the job market is needing and transforming the way education works into a more flexible um, strategy in which people can come and go and continuously develop skills through their lifetime. Um, and we're helping institutions in that transition. You're, the way you describe that, it just reminds me of our own um, passion really for helping learners get from education to work and, and do that lifetime learning. And uh, it's been a tough slog these last five or six years to try to help um, you know, position the the open standards in such a way that they would be up, ta up taken up by product companies like your own. And uh, we're thrilled with the progress that you all have made with the standards. Um, what evidence do you have that that indicates that you're making progress to solve the problems that you set set out to solve? Great. So. We, we are a global company. Um, as you know, we started outside of the US. Now we are getting into the US market. So we have several signs as, um, for example, in some countries, there were public policy that was changed to instead of giving funding to public institutions based on graduation grades, they changed it to uh, get funding based on uh, employability rates. Um, and when we started implementing our platform, we started to see how employability rates came up, how we even increased the amount of money students were earning, and how we started to give opportunities to students that came from public institutions compared to private institutions uh, or non-for-profit private institutions. 
um, and they were starting to get those jobs that they normally were not getting. Um, even there are cases in which by just showing these skills, showing evidence of the skills on, on a comprehensive learner record for a student, um, some students that came out of like a CTE program from high school now are getting jobs that, you know, people that got degrees from college were getting in the past. So what's going on here is that by now showing the skills, we have a lot of cases um, with our customers on how we are creating inclusion, how we are giving opportunities to people that were not having those opportunities. And, and we even have cases in which employability rates uh, increase it. Of course, it's not just implementation of the software. It's a whole strategy. As an example, I gave the, the, the Colombian government a strategy of changing the public policy. Um, and now institutions are focused on employability. Uh, but our software and our platform um, makes this possible and helps map and helps manage all that process. Um, so that's that's some of the signs that we have of making progress globally. And in the case of the US, um, we are seeing these signs in on one side of our customers using our platform. Not yet we have the amount of data to say, hey, we increase employability rates, but we have the students saying, hey, this is much better than having a transcript. This is much better than only showing me the courses that I took. Um, and on the other side is we are seeing how there is a big movement around also changing the public policy in the US. We are seeing states transforming. We are seeing projects that are, you know, um, lead lead it by one attack to, to transform this. And, and we are being part of that. So that's that's how we are seeing the progress of solving these problems. And I truly believe that if we are solving these problems for low income students in Latin America, I'm pretty sure that we can solve this problem also for students in the US. You know, paying education providers for outcomes, which is one of the policies that you've helped influence, which is phenomenal from my point of view, is pretty radical. It's a kind of a radical thought uh, in this country, certainly. And um, I'm, I'm curious, it made me think about, you know, the time that you now you've spent as a contributing member here at One EdTech. And what type of outcomes do you feel that you've benefited from, or perhaps derived from your participation in the one ed tech community so first I, I must say that when we met one ed tech it was like hey this is the organization we must be part of um, as our the main reason for us to succeed is helping students transition from education to work and pulling data from multiple systems so having interoperability with multiple systems uh, like SIS, LMSs, and, and now and we will talk about this uh, uh, on, on, on what you're working on with a HR systems. Uh, really, that that is a big impact for us as One Tech gets more and more organizations to go into this interoperability movement. Uh, it helped us uh, in growing our product, it helped us on getting more data into our product and sending data to others and making sure we give value to students. So that's that's something big for us. Um, and being in one at a contributed member and knowing what's what's next um, help us to drive our product, help us to drive our go to market. Um, and how we are going to work into the future into more systems and more interoperable strategies um, as we are growing our solutions. So that's that's one side of what we have got from one attack um, and our engagement. Um, on the other part is, uh, I will say that all these events, all these push that one attack makes. Um, on one side, interoperability, but, but as you said, you share the passion of, hey, how we help people transition from education to work, how do we help um, organizations show the skills, um, 
uh, all that has helped Territorium to, to get into the market, to get uh, organizations know about what we are doing. And that has been great for us. And I must say that we are fully committed to uh, all this um, one ethic purpose around um, interoperability as much more interoperable we make our platform and much more other platforms become interoperable we really create an ecosystem that gives value to the end user that is the student so um, really as 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 one attack pushes this forward is a way for us also to grow you mentioned our work in hr space and um as you know we have for the last 18 and a half months or so been uh, developing a demonstration project called Wellspring. Um, and the reason for this mostly is because um, while, while the open standards are very, very important, they're not as important or as um, um, impactful um, as seeing the benefits of their use, the ability for a learner to be able to share her records independently of a platform in pursuit of a job or in pursuit of her, the next level of education. Um, so so um, with, this, with this software, we have in fact um, opened up a number of eyes, we think, for, to people who can now see how important the open standards and the interoperability really are in, in order for this scalable marketplace for, for skills to actually uh, take root. So uh, I'm really curious about the essential qualities of the, the work that our members are doing and how that re reflects or is mirrored perhaps in your own roadmap. So, you know, the key aspects of our work, I would say, are learner self-sovereignty, the ability for that learner to be able to share her credentials independently, uh, have those credentials be verifiable and the official record of the organization that's issuing those documents, and therefore, you know, get the American Association of Collegiate Registrars, for example, on board with this effort, as they are, and then finally, the interoperability that you mentioned is essential. Otherwise, these records will be locked in proprietary platforms and ne never really controllable by the learner. And, and what for that for us, what that means is that platforms will both import data, but also export data. The, those records will be exportable from those platforms. So I'm I'm curious how strongly aligned are your team's product strategy and roadmap with those principles? So we are fully aligned with this. Um, I will say more than strongly aligned um, as it's part of how we see our, our own growth as territorium. On one side, the self sovereignty so making sure students own their data, it's very important because as you said, Imagine a student that went to one high school, then went to one another college or three college in 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 their um, in while they were going to to the college programs or to university, um, and and we all know now that more than fifty percent of students change of college. So imagine if you get out of college, you're looking for a job, and you need to ask for the records to each of the universities you went to it becomes a real problem uh, for you. Um, and also it becomes a real problem for helping the student. Because if we don't have a place where they can own their integrated record and then use that data by any platform just to give them recommendations or connect them into jobs, we can never help them on that transition. And we will rely on the traditional resume that is not verifiable. We we will rely in you know other types of platforms like platforms like LinkedIn and others, um, in which a college student doesn't have much to put in there. You know, like hey, I went to college. While if we can pull all these records and transform them into skills, 
we can have a progression of the student to all the universities they went to, to the high schools they went to. And, and if we go further, imagine having all these since the student went to elementary school and then using that data uh, to help them navigate through high school and then into college and then into the job market or graduate school, it's, it's really important to have one place that is not owned by anyone with that data. And then the student can decide who can take a look at the data and use it for whatever. Um, but the, the base of achieving that is interoperability on one side and making sure that students can have all their data in a digital wallet or, or whatever we want to call it, but it, in one place. Um, so uh, we are fully aligned because that's, that's, I will say, the base of our business model and the base as an organization of what we're doing on our products, uh, making sure students can own that record no matter how many institutions they went to. And if we see it from the other perspective, right now, most of what we do is working with um, college universities, uh, working with high schools. Um, however, um, part of our vision is how then we start helping employers and how we start helping employers to decide which students to hire, to show them verifiable data um, and making sure there is interoperability with HR systems is key for us. So um, as one attack moves in, into this area, we want to move with, a one, with one attack. So that, that one attack strategy, and even I will say uh, the roadmap that one attack has, um, it's, it's really we are moving with that roadmap. As much more one attack moves, more we will move towards that. So we're, we're fully aligned with all those principles, principles. And, um, and we strongly believe that's the way forward to make sure we help people in that transition from education to work. That's really exciting because, uh, you know, a company of your team's caliber can, can really make a difference and you are making a difference. Um, and we appreciate it a lot. You know, that there is a, a really very substantial community of institutions that are engaged in this work and following this work. A fair amount of employers are also involved and stakeholders in the education to work, uh, com again, community, very, very interested in this and learning more. And we still find that there is some amount of confusion with terminology. I I'm not sure if you're finding this to be the case or not, but, you know, we hear about, of course, the comprehensive learner record, which is the open standard published by One EdTech and, and its members. But you also hear about the, a learning and employment record, or an LER, and now, of course, verifiable credentials. And uh, we frequently get questions about um, what is perceived as multiple standards or you know, competing standards, et cetera which is really a negative. It's a drag on the, on the, uh, the advancement and the, and the potential in the marketplace to have that confusion because it freezes the market. Um, so what can you share that might help make sense of these terms? Right. So I, I will say that, you know, like learning and employ, employment records is like a big category, right? It's like, hey, the information that you have from your credentials, the information that you have in your comprehensive learner record from college, from high school, from what you did in your education, um, the information of your resume. So I, I will say that's like really a big category. And I will, I will say that it does not compete, right? It's really like saying, hey, this all goes between your learning and employment records. And, and, and if, if we see it in the past, a learning and employment record was your resume, right? <laughs> um, the only thing is that we are adding more between your within your learning and employment records. Um, 
And, and within that, you will have verifiable credentials, the specific skills that are verifiable that someone issued to you. And, and that works with other standards from, from one attack by cock and badges. Um, and that goes within the CLR. At, at the end, what I, what I believe is, hey, um, on, on one side, there is like, like the category, the concepts, hey, we need learning and employment records that are interoperable. And then we have technology wise, I will say it, hey, this, these are the specific standards that we need so that we can have interoperable learning and employment records. Um, and, and I think that's, that's the important part of understanding for all vendors on one side and also for institutions. Um, I think it's important not to get lost on the, like, the technology side, right? Uh, the important thing is the concept of interoperability, uh, because sometimes, and as you said, it, you, you go to certain events or certain, um, certain vendors even, they go very deep on like the technology side, like, hey, these are the specific standards and we are going to communicate this. But at the end, Technology is important, but what's most important is the concept. Um, and at the end, who is taking the decisions on the institution side, maybe it's not necessarily the, the CIO, it's really, you know, uh, the president, the provost, uh, career services. And, and we really need to talk about, hey, these are the concepts. And on the inter interoperability side, we will take care of it. Don't worry about that. We use one attack, um, and 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 from my perspective, one attack is the leader leading organization on that. Um, so it's it's making sure that we differentiate that. You know, here's the technology side, and here is the concept side, um, and that's 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 my perspective. Very helpful. Um, you know, you mentioned our work in HR. And um, as you were describing learning and employment records, it made me think of the pro project that we're currently doing uh, with the HR Open Standards Organization. We're working with HR Open to develop a resume standard so that these verifiable credentials for achievement, so open badges and comprehensive learner records, they, they can actually be included inside of a digital resume. And so, you know, the normal process that we all follow, if we're submitting a resume for a job opportunity, that same exact process will be available, but in a di digital and verifiable form. So we're really excited about that. And the progress on the project is, is moving, uh, moving along. Um, so uh, you, you may remember that we provided some demonstration software for the Wellspring project to show how this ecosystem can actually work, thanks to the really ge very generous uh, funding by the Walmart Foundation and also the Charles Koch Foundation, we were able to develop this these demonstration software products. They are being updated as we speak to incorporate this new concept of a resume exchange. And so it's our thinking that that will probably really resonate strongly with the employers, the recruiters, a, the applicant tracking systems, when they when they hear us not talking about badges or CLRs, but talking about resumes with onboard verifiable achievements. Right. Completely agree. Completely agree. Um, for employers, it's, hey, this is a verifiable resume with more details than a traditional resume. Um, at the end, on the back end is the CLR. On the back end um, is, you know, like the open badges. Uh, but what's important for for the uh, employers is this the new resolution. So, so I completely agree with you. Um, it's just how we divide the concepts from the technology um, and, and, and really go deep on those concepts um, and help people understand those concepts. Right. And hopefully, um, you know, chats like this will will help in that way. I hope I hope that's the case, and I expect it will be. 
Uh, you know, this transformation, I'll call it, to the digital credentials. Um, we believe this will be a long process and it's going to require a lot of hard work by many dedicated stakeholders, member, members of uh, providing products like yourself, institutions, employers, the whole HR tech community. Uh, so there's a lot of work to be done. And sometimes it you know, can be a little discouraging, the pace of progress that we're making. Um, while we are making definite progress, I, there's no doubt about it, it's never as quick or as fast as you'd like it to be. Um, so um, with that in mind, what can you share about you know, your perception of the future of CLR and these digital credentials in education and work and what setting expectations for for what others might recognize as the probable path forward? Yeah, so what what I, I believe is that, um, and we believe as Territorium, is that the future of CLR is that the CLR will become the new transcript in a certain way. So, um, and, and, and well, you have been working with these with, with ACRO and registrars in, in, in the US. Um, they, are all, they all are looking for something different to give to their students. That's one side. But on the other side, um, students more and more need um, to have, I will say, like more detailed data of what they did. Um, and that really maps back to the job market. Um, now, more than ever, students are asking themselves, hey, what's the return of investment in my education? Is really this course that I took or this program that I took helping me to get a better job um, that could bring me more money or earn more money? Um, so as, as we see that need on the student side, and on the other side, um, the employers are pushing for this. And, and you just said what, what, what Wanatech is working on the Wellspring project. Um, we will start to see more and more institutions transitioning or transforming their transcripts. Um, and, and if we see it in a certain perspective, that will be your data that comes with you like the same way you have your health uh, registry or your health data, you know, and you go from one uh, from from one hospital to another, um, and they know what you took and which uh, doctors you see, etc., which health problems you have. Uh, the same is for education, and 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 we need that transformation as as people are becoming more flexible about their education, as employers are not necessarily asking for a traditional degree anymore, and more and more employers are going into that, we need another way of showing that students have skills. And, and CLR is the way forward. Um, when when we, we met you and we met the CLR standard, um, and we started knowing more, more about it. Uh, we, we at that exact moment we knew, hey, this will be the new transcript. Uh, of course, it will take time, uh, as you said. But there are early adopters. I think we're in that phase now, and we will get into the phase in which more and more institutions will get this, and it will be a must must have. Um, so that's that's the future that we see. And you mentioned our relationship and support from ACRO, the American Association of Collegiate Registrars. We couldn't be happier about their support and, and their um, um, endorsement of the CLR standard. So we're very, very pleased about that. And so, yeah, the future is bright. I, I, I totally believe that. And um, it's because of committed products that such as your team is producing and, and you're leading. Um, so Territorium has done a lot in just a few years that I've known you all. I'm, I'm curious, what's the future hold, Guillermo? Yeah, so 
there are two things on our future. One is uh, we're looking to transform the way information is registered for students. So being a lead provider for CLRs and thinking of CLRs as a new transcript, it's, it's our future. And that's how we see our US expansion. And that's how we see more and more institutions going to the CLR. I, I'm not saying that they will say they will destroy the traditional transcript. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is that it, it will be the new thing that institutions will go in. So that's, that's very important for us. The second um, side that we see for Territorium is it's not only producing that data and producing that record and that profile of skills for students, but it's really using that information to connect students with learning, connect them to jobs, connect them to uh, assessment so that they can demonstrate more skills. Um, and I will say when I go into assessment, we really see also a growth in the transformation of high stakes assessments because CLRs can become a way of validating which skills a student have so that they can get into college or get into a graduate school. And as I said, on one side, we are seeing a transformation in, um, in, in transcripts. We will see a transformation in admission tests or in high stakes assessments. And CLR is very important for that, um, for, for really um, creating a very inclusive way and holistic um, strategy for admissions. And then also a way for deciding how a student gets into a job. So we, we see ourselves more than just a software company, a company that is, will really help to create an ecosystem for helping people into transitions. And when I say transitions, it's moving from high school to college, moving from high school to a job, or the other way around, from having a job, um, maybe being a college dropout, and going back to college. So. Uh, that's how we see Territorium, a um, company that will work and help people on those transitions by creating all this data on the student side. Well, I tell you, we're very fortunate to have Territorium as a member. And uh, among, among our uh, contributing members, we, we feel like we um, are walking down this path together. And... Um, it's, it's wonderful, frankly. I just wanted to thank you again, Guillermo. And thank you, Mark. Put a plug in for territorium.com. Thank you very much, Guillermo. Thank you very much, Mark. And we're very happy to be in this path together.